And then there is also a hand. A hand um, yeah. I'm going to share the DVD of my thing.
So what do you think about that song? If you are, um, you know, reading the lyrics, is there any like one speaking in the song or is it representing, you know, um, the feeling of Justin Bieber as the singer? Yeah, I think it's, it's about his love life. So yeah, so right, from a song you can actually, you know, refer to some lines, right? And lyrics are presented in some lines with of very beautiful words. And it also applies to poem, actually. And here, we're gonna try to read some poems of these, um, you know, wonderful poets. And the first one will be about um, a poem for uh, from the American poet, which is Emily Dickinson. And then the second one is from William Woodward's uh, poem. And both of these poems. Poets actually are pretty good at lyrical poems, uh, which are, you know, poems that have a very strong sense of personal voice. That means when you are reading their um, poets, poetry, I mean, you will find, you know, someone speaking as if you are telling about your condition, your feeling, or other people's uh, feeling or uh, condition. And for Emily, usually Emily focuses on uh, a part of, you know, nature, love, and then beauty of, you know, the nature. Well, for this one, for William, it's of course uh, focuses on writing a poem that represents, uh, what is it, like the condition of the nature. I think it's the, the nature uh, poetry will be more, um, you know, um, what is it? A lot uh, from the Williams work rather than Emily's. For Emily, it's kind of like diverse topic. Okay, now uh, for lyrical poem, do you have any idea what is lyrical poem? Gerardo, do you want to try? What is a lyrical poem? Yes, what do you know about it? Well, the first thing that came to mind is just a song. So like a song. Like a song, okay. And there will be like someone speaking there, as right. if there is someone yes. speaking. Right. Yeah. Listening. And in lyrical poem, you will see some characteristics in terms of words, which are probably it's you know indicated by some choices of words. For example, um, what is it like I or we? For example. And for lyrical poem here, as I mentioned before, it's actually a person's voice. It can be the speaker of, uh, I mean like the poet, who express their feeling, or it can be others' feeling or others' voices. Okay. All right, so here we, we will have like a short uh, poetry from William Wordsworth, okay? And the next um, activity that we are gonna do is to review some characteristics and structure of the poetry. Now, I'm going to ask you to pay attention to stanza. You will find it on your handout on uh, page two. Okay, so what do you think, Rosa? What is stanza? Uh, Could you please read it? Yeah, it is kind of like a paragraph of the poetry, right? So if you take a look at here, all of these lines are called stanza, okay? Mm -hmm. And then what about the second one? Verses. Emily, do you want to try? A line of a poem, <coughs> oh, sorry. A line of a poem or a poem itself. Okay. So could you please point it out which one is the line of the poem? The world is too much with our slates unseen. Yes, that's one of them. Okay, so this is called a uh, verse. Or in Indonesian, you could say uh, baris, right? And then the second one is personal pronoun. As I mentioned before, lyrical poem will be related to the voice of the speaker. It's signified by the personal pronoun. 
Do you find any personal pronoun there, Gerardo? In the poetry? Oh, um, Ruby. I. I, yes, I. Any other we, else? We, ours. We, ours, okay. So those are some words related to the personal pronoun. Okay. Now you can see there that I put, you know, some highlights on the words. Oh, sorry. Now, let's take a look at these boxes. You don't see like some boxes are colored the same and the others are, you know, uh, just differently colored. And now, um, when you see in the end of the lyric or the first, you will find like, um, kind of like rhyme or similar patterns in terms of pronunciation. So for example, you will see soon with boon, right? Or moon with tune, or others like powers with, uh, what else? Oh, flowers, for example, or hours. So now, let's take a look at the other um, characteristic, which is rhyme. Okay, Emily, do you wanna try what is rhyme according to the handout? Words that end with similar sounds usually at the end of a line of the poem. Okay, so now let's take a look at, um, which one? Uh, for example, I'd rather be, okay? Please pay attention to the word be. Which are the words that has the same pronunciation as be? In the following verse. Rosa, do you want to try? Right, B, V, and C, okay? So they are having the same pronunciations or, you know, kind of tones, okay? All right, now, if you are, you know, telling that uh, this poem actually has a rhyme or kind of like a sing a song, you know, a words, you could actually figure out the pattern. For the first one, soon, it can be like, you, you can actually like code it with a rhyme A, and then for powers, you can uh, code it with rhyme B, and then the next one for hours, you can code it with uh, rhyme C. And then in the following verses, try to come up with the same pattern. Are there any same patterns as the previous um, rhymes, or are there, any different patterns. If there are uh, different patterns, then you should continue with other codes, okay? All right, now let's take a look at the other. Uh, in the previous week, you have learned much about figure of speech, okay? So I just wanna focus on only one type of figure of speech. Okay, so Gerardo, what is figure of speech? Uh, a word or phrase that means something more or something other than it seems to say. Okay, do you think that figure of speech is a literal meaning? No. No, right? Okay. So one of the example here is oxymoron. You will have getting and spending as the example of oxymoron. Oxymoron here is kind of like <coughs> Writing two words which have contrast meaning. So, for example, getting, getting, spending. You you put you know, um, you put it out. And then the next one is oh this one, hours and hours. As I mentioned, the rhyme of this poem is A B C, A A B C A. Now let's let's focus on the pink one which is hours and hours. It's actually like having two same pronunciations, although uh, in, in writing, it's, uh, it's different, you know? So which one is uh, the rhyme for these words? Okay, there are two kinds of rhymes there. I rhyme and N rhyme. According to the definition, which one do you think is rhyme for these words. Rosa, do you have any idea? Um, the N rhyme? Sorry, what is it? N rhyme? N rhyme, right. Because it happens at the end of the word, okay? Okay, now let's 
move on to the iron. Iron. Okay, what does it supposed to be for I iron? Gerardo. Similar spelling of words, no, uh, pronunciation in the beginning, middle or end, mm -hmm. such as rough and through. Rough and through. At the end, at the end of the word, or at the at the end of the word, or in the middle of the sentence. Which one do you think? Uh, is it in the end? It's for rhyme. I rhyme, I rhyme here. Yeah, it could be the middle or end. Okay. Yes. And then, what about the writing, the spelling of the of the uh, words? Do you think it's the same or different. do you think it's different? Different. What about the pronunciation? Slightly different. Slightly different. Well, it, it's, well I guess it's kind of the same. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So from here, you could say from the moon and tune, right? From the moon and tune, it's a bit, uh, it's different in terms of, you know, um, spellings. But when you are seeing the uh, pronunciation, it's gonna, um, it's gonna, um, you know, a bit similar, a bit similar, but it only differs from the letter, you know, the letter M and also T, uh, t uh, preceding the, the word, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so before, before that, did you have any question? Okay, not yet. Okay, the next characteristic of a poem is diction. Okay, remember that when you are writing a poem, you should pick a certain word to, you know, accentuate the meaning of the poem itself. But let's just let, let's just take a look at this example. Um, in in a poem, we have so many varieties of words. It can be like words that are used in specific periods. It can be because the poem wants to, what is it? Wants to um, create a meaningful rhyme. You know, as you can see on this one, like powers and flowers, hours and hours. So um, in creating the poem, we are, we are not actually like choosing, you know, any words, but instead you should think of such diction. Now, Let's, let's move on to this one. A sacro versus breastfed, okay? If you are maybe like looking up in your dictionary, you will find that sacro means breastfeeding or something. But why the poem, uh, the poet, I mean, doesn't use breastfed, right? That's the question that, I, that we want to ask um, um, every time we are writing a poem. And then the next one. For Lee and Grassland, which one do you think like um, create a better rhyme for this poem? Because here we have like Lee and C, so that's why in in order to create the rhyme, the poet um, pick Lee instead of Grassland, right? And then the next one is uh, Oxymoron. Oxymoron also kind of uh, one of the you know, idea where uh, the poet can put some words, specific words, to create that contrastive values and also um, with certain, um, you know, choices of words or diction. For example, like sorbit boon. Boon here is related to the, uh, which one? Oh, to the tune, right? And then getting and spending. Do you see like there is the ink the infert here, or you could gerund one, because it's kind of like more beautiful, right? So that's uh, the purpose of having diction in um, in poem. Now, let's take a look at some uh, definition, you know, some definitions of these um, vocabularies. So in this poem, we have like, of course, an interpretation, okay? And everyone is free to interpret the poem as long as it makes sense. Um, well, for number one and number 
uh, uh, first number one and two, and until you know the last uh, sentence, do you have any idea about what what kind of you know messages that William tries to convey from this poem? Let's take a look at uh, the line one. Emily, you want to try? Um, well, he could be saying that when he says the world is too much with us, it could imply that with like the planet with us on it, humans on it is too much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, without reading the poem, that would be my first impression. Yes, yeah. If you see here, like, the world is too much with us, it seems a little bit, you know, negative mm -hmm. perspective because the poet is trying to criticize why this on earth, you know, there are so many people, there are many mm -hmm. populations. And then let's take a look at the second one. Getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. So how do you make an, um, you know, interpretation on this sentence, Gerardo? Um, in receiving something, um, it's as if you've never received it. So like, I think about, well, that, that's what, what I mean is like the powers, um, so like, like it's neutralized, I mean, it's the oxymoron getting and spending, so it kind of like evens out its... Yeah, like when you are like getting, you get, for example, you get money, mm -hmm. and then you spend it, you know, for, for anything that you want, it means that we lay waste our powers, wasting. It's kind of like you are wasting your, your money for uh, everything that you want, or maybe for just things that are not necessary enough. So again, he is criticizing about the human's behavior, you know, in being more consumptive, I guess. Okay, now let's move on to the next one. Um, little we see in nature that is ours. And then the next one, we have given our hearts away, a sordid boon. Okay, now I'm giving you, um, a clue on some words there. Okay, for sordid boon, sordid means uh, like greed, tama, yeah? And then after that, we have boon. Um, boon here is again uh, sordid, I mean, uh, again, oxymoron. Do you remember oxymoron, right? Mm -hmm. So for, for sordid, it's kind of like negative one, and boon is positive one. Sordid means Greed and then a uh, boon means benefit. So from here, what can you imply, Rosa? Um, <laughs> I think that is connected with the waste. <coughs> yeah. How? So that at the end, it's it's not worth it. Yeah, kind of like when you are giving your hearts away, you don't care anymore, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have that consideration to spend up your money. You will not, you know, being considerate enough to um, spend that money for things that are necessary, okay? Now, let's, let's just move to the next slide. The first, oh, sorry, the fifth and the sixth until the seventh. Okay, please read for a moment. Okay. On these lines, we talk much about nature. Okay. And then the next one, for this, for everything, you're out of tune. That means for this, for everything, for this nature, for this, you know, seeing through, uh, and then um, winds, and then flowers, and all these kind of like nature, you know, um, living things we actually cannot, you know, uh, put attention more on, on these this living things. And then, again, he's complaining. I'd rather be a pagan, a pagan suckled in quick outward. 
So my eye standing on this pleasant plea. Again, I will give you some clues on some specific words there. Okay, for um, pagan, okay, pagan actually kind of like faith, you know, religious beliefs. And then for sakul, again, sakul means getting some seeds or, you know, um, some actually like, yeah, some, 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 some food, something like that. So how could you uh, interpret from these two lines? And for this one, creep outward. Creep outward. Creep means a belief. Outward means um, outdated or, you know, kind of uh, old, old fashioned, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you are trying to interpret this, the author, um, the speaker in the poem is trying to, um, you know, to say that, oh, Actually, if I can move from this earth, right? If I can move from this earth, I, I, I hope I can, I can believe in other, uh, again, the, the mystical, outward means like old fashioned or um, um, mystical, mystical beliefs. And then he said, so might I standing on this pleasant leaf. Pleasance mean pleasure. You are having a great, you know, feeling when you are standing on this lee. Lee means um, graceland. Okay. So how could you imply from these um, lines? Emily, do you want to try? Uh, oh. Here, Fox. Again, you have some specific words here yeah. that could be your clue.
power of Proteus and also Triton. Do you ever read maybe like some Greek myths? Okay, any questions so far about the adjective? 
objective and now? Nothing, right? Great job. Okay. Now, do you have your laptops with you? Yep. Okay. Great students. <laughs> okay. No worries. <laughs> and we'll share. Okay. <laughs> or maybe you can try to. So now we are going to play with these moods, okay? I'm sure that you are feeling the atmosphere of this poem, okay? So, um, well, in your handout, you will find this page, okay? So please pay attention to this one. Wow. <laughs> Okay, now, um, now here you're going to uh, visualize the feelings or emotions, okay, in your language based on the word list that I will give later. Okay, so I'm going to show, uh, to, to show some examples on how we can do it. Okay, please pay attention to my slide. We have some words here. Rapture, adoration, soothing, zest, loathing, alienation, and uh, the woo. Okay? Uh, which one of these words are not familiar enough to you all? Uh, rapture. Okay. Rapture. Any other else? Zest. Zest. Wo wo woo. Woo. Okay. Three of it. All right. Let's just discuss one by one first. Rapture means like uh, your feeling is kind of enthusiastic um, and also like full of energy. It, let's say if you are having a party and then um, your families come over to your house, so you are feeling like so energetic, you know? So that's uh, rapture. Okay, so all of these uh, words are in noun. Okay, don't worry about that. We can work on later about the adjectives of the nouns. And then the next one is zest. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, for zest, here, oh, sorry everyone. I think for rapture, it is a kind of joy. It's kind of like um, reverse, okay? Uh, for rapture, it's kind of joy of having that uh, pleasure. And then uh, the zest one is enthusiasm. Okay, in Indonesia, enthusiasm, or you could say uh, being enthusiastic, and then the next one is woo. That's the last common word, the la uh, the last uncommon word. A uh, woo, which is um, the negative feeling, which is uh, sorrow or deep sadness. Okay. So now you are having the key vocabularies with you related to moods. Okay, now let's try to brainstorm first in your language. If you're speaking Spanish, please identify the words in your language. And if you're um, having another language other than English, also please um, try to identify those words in your language. As if we are done with this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now let's try to move on on the drawing part. Okay. Could you please open a paint app on your laptop? Jane. Paint. Okay. Did you okay?
some words and then you're going to visualize the word according to um, each of this feeling okay so okay are you ready everyone yes people on the zoom are you ready yes okay so let's come back to this list now trying to come up with um the word for long okay Painter? Yes, you can use any colors that represent this feeling. Visualize the the feeling or the emotion from this word, it and then categorize it based on the nouns that you are having right now on your hand up. <laughs> We're just doing the color, not like a drawing. The color, yeah. As I shown here. I only have like some specific colors. I can actually like, you know, um, uh, what is it? Like mix any colors um, that can yeah. represent the feeling. Okay, and then you can now uh, move on to the next word. Okay, have you done drawing the emotion? Yeah. Wow, that's great. Wow. Let's see, Portland oh, of good. Gerardo. Ooh. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. that's really good. I'm jealous. <laughs> what about you? What about you? Do you have your color? Oh man, it's so sorrow. <laughs> okay, now let's move on to the next one. C. C. Oh, you can do C. Yeah, Rosa, maybe you can just share the laptop. C. Now you have those colors, you 
62. Okay, so let's move on to again to this table. Okay, <laughs> and I want you to uh, categorize the uh, words that we have uh, visualized before. Okay, now rupture among the words that we have drawn. Yes. Do you have um, the word in rupture? In our language? No, from um, from the words that we have discussed, like maybe see, for example, do you have like some sort of feelings that can be oh, you know, I see. visualized um, for C win? I associate the C with rapture. Rapture. Okay. Joy. Joy. Yes, I feel so calmly when I, you know, go to beach and then just look for some breeze and waves of the sea, right? What about you, Rosa? Sleeping flowers. Do you have any emotions here that can be associated with that word? Again, emotion or soothing? Soothing? Yes. Do you have the same idea? I would say for flowers. Yes, sleeping flowers. The <laughs> the woo, okay, it's kind of like sorrow. Okay, what about Joyce? Do you have, uh, oh, what about you, Joyce, for sordid boon? The, the, what, which one? The boon? Sordid, uh, sordid boon, which is, uh, sordid means, um, <laughs> what is it? The negative one, and then boon is the positive. That means um, the the benefits and lose uh, the benefits and also the losing, you know. So it means like or lose more, yeah. I think it's like a somewhat dark color, like a dark like a color. Or, yeah. Yeah. Which of these? Which of these? Yeah. Which of these adjectives or uh, no well, adjective uh, emotions? that are representing sordid boon? Um, the emotions is, um, um, I think it's like, uh, woo, um, the woo? Yeah, it could be, it could yeah. be, right? Because it's kind of like a conflict, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. And negative. You can just explain what's coming next. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, now it's done with the drawing. <laughs> okay, now we will come up with the next uh, exercise, which is to convey or deliver the central point or the central idea of the uh, poem. Okay, I've given you a sentence frame here and you can use it to express your thought. Okay. So, Gerardo, what do you think? What is the central idea of the Williams poetry? Um. <laughs> it's too much like the world. <laughs> the world is too much. Um, I would say... What is the question again? What is the central theme or oh. idea of the poetry? Do you remember about this image when you are trying to interpret that poetry? Too much with human? Oh, uh, how is right now? Um, and you just said <laughs> this. The world is too much with yeah. us. Didn't I just say that? So could you please come up with the sentence frame? You could say the poetry implicitly oh. explains that the so world. the interpretation of the poetry is the world is too much with us? <laughs> the world is too much with us? Okay. Uh, let's, let's just call the people in Zoom. Uh, Jenny! <laughs> Jenny! Do you want to try to say something about the central idea of the Williams poetry? Um, it looks like even though there's a sea of people, people 
school might be forlorn. Okay. Could you please pick one of the sentence frame here and then continue with your uh, interpretation? The point Based is... on the image or it says poetry? In the, in the yellow box, you could say one of them and then continue it with the central idea of the poem. <laughs> what? Am I saying it based on the poem we read earlier or based on the image? No, this this image is kind of like the Correctly visualization or imaging of the poetry. Okay. Okay. And um, then now you're you're trying to figure out um, the central idea of the poem after we have some sort of discussion on the interpretation. Okay. Okay. And now we have these sentence frames to help you express your your uh, thought about it, about the central idea. So please just choose one of them. My interpretation of the poetry is that in a world of billions, many Wow, that's yes. it. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jenny, for having that big plot. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then the next one will be the same, though. The discussion will be uh, ongoing the same with the analyst detention poetry. And then the next activity will be about um, having the students to write their own poetry or way to call poem poetry by having these kind of like poetic um, frames, okay? So we're not going uh, to do this one. Okay, just do... <laughs> I think, okay, just, yeah. I wanna wrap up with this one. And then for the exit ticket, um, I'm planning to give the students the, these three questions, you know, with Again, observation on this uh, uh, poem. Okay, so that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed the class. Thank you. Thank you for being a nice to students today. <laughs> Jenny, wow, you were super fun. <laughs> wow. Jenny, do you, do you read poetry or write poetry? Too? Do you what? No, Jenny. What? Jenny. Yeah, Jenny. Do you write a poetry? Do you like poetry? I do like poetry and I've written 